Hello, and welcome to our podcast on setting in literature. This is one of many literary devices that we will be looking at throughout the year, but this is a pretty foundational one because it really establishes where any stories are taking place, where the hero's journeys are taking place in any of the stories or texts that we are reading. So let's go ahead and see what we're talking about. So as we have said, the hero's journey serves as a foundation for almost any fictional text that we may be encountering throughout our schooling. And so the model we use uses those 12 steps that you can see here and that are reinforced in the previous podcast on that hero's journey. But as you look at the hero's journey a little bit more closely, you can see that setting, the idea of location, time, and then limits and pressures that we'll talk about in a second, setting does exist inside that hero's journey because the hero's journey has to happen somewhere and that somewhere is setting. And so that's going to be typically step one, the ordinary world. We meet our character somewhere. And then eventually that character has to do something, has to go on some sort of a journey. And so that could be some sort of metaphorical journey or are in kind of their same ordinary world, but they are challenged by new things. Or it could be that this character is actually moving settings and going to someplace completely unknown to them. Regardless, that seems to be around step five, entering the unknown. So our character is faced with either a challenge within their established setting, or they are moved settings, and now they have to face a setting that they are unfamiliar with. And then ultimately you can see steps 9, 10, 11, and 12, when the character comes quote unquote back to where they began, that is either they are coming back to their ordinary world because they have figured out all of their problems and everything's good, or they are returning to that ordinary world from this other setting that they had to go to in order to have that journey. So a little bit abstract at this point, but let's go ahead and see more about what we're talking about. When we talk about setting in literature, we are talking about three items, the physical location that a story is taking place in, the time that the story is taking place in. So that could be the actual time, like 1945, but it could also be the length of time of the story. So for example, this story takes place over one hour, or as in the example of say something like Harry Potter, this story takes place over seven years. And then the coolest part of setting that we like to talk about is what we call limitations and pressures. And so we'll see what each of these mean in a little bit more depth. So I know that you've probably talked about setting since elementary school. Okay, a story has to be set somewhere. And usually we've just talked about time and place and, and moved on. But we have to think about this. Story and plot must happen somewhere. We can't have a blank set where nothing goes on, where it's just a white screen and characters behave in front of that. So if we're going to put characters into a story, they have to be placed into a setting. Additionally, and the coolest part, like I said before, the setting gives limits and pressures to the characters. Oftentimes theme is revealed when characters learn about themselves. How does a character learn about themselves? Well, they probably have to be challenged in some way. If there's a story where a character just wakes up and everything goes perfectly that day, the character isn't going to learn about themselves. So we have to challenge that character. Well, oftentimes those challenges come from the setting when we really think about this, whether that is a bully at school, whether that is going to an entirely new school, going on some sort of adventure to fight dragons, going to an adventure in space. As the character experiences their setting in a different way, or they experience a completely different setting to begin with, they're going to be pressured to learn, to grow, and their learning and growth helps reveal theme is the learning we're supposed to be doing about ourselves, about life, about being human through these characters growing. And again, oftentimes that growing comes because of the challenges from the setting. So here are the steps that we will use to kind of put all of these things together. So how do we use setting to find that lesson for ourselves? Well, first off, we have to remember that texts are intentional. Authors don't put their character in a setting just because it's easy. They are putting a character in a specific setting for a specific reason. And so we need to notice where 
is this setting taking place? When is it taking place? How do characters interact with that setting? And then what limits from the setting put pressures on the characters that help those characters to respond, to become challenged, to overcome? And as those characters grow and learn about themselves, we are able to learn and grow from their learning. These are symbolic journeys that these characters take that we are supposed to learn from. And so we must interpret these stories and apply them to ourselves. And that application is how we learn theme. So these are the analysis steps that we continue to use all year when applying any of these literary terms. So we'll spend a little bit of time here on this first podcast, on this early podcast in the year, but please know that we should be doing this all the time whenever we are reading literature. Number one, we have to read actively in order to identify that a literary element is even happening. So we have to pay close attention to setting as we're talking about it here, but eventually we have to be paying close attention to a static character, an illusion, a piece of irony. We actually have to read beyond just plot and identify that those things are happening. We need to read actively, and then every time we see those elements that we're looking for, we should write them down. Number two, we have to consider how is that element being used in this text, and that's that reading actively part. We're not just reading for story, which is hopefully fun. We are reading for story, but also the interpretive level. What can we learn from this text? And then as we are figuring out how the element is treated in this text, we move on to step three, where it is, how might you be being pushed by the author to think about and to learn from that same literary device? So like we said, the first big piece of setting is physical location. Where a story is set physically does matter. So for example, something that's science fiction Is it set in a galaxy far, far away, as in the Star Wars series, that doesn't really necessarily exist, so settings can take on rules of their own? Or is there a text like Moon, where the setting is actually our Earth's moon, and therefore it's a little bit more realistic while still being science fiction? Is the setting the city of Chicago? Is it the city of New York, where the Great Gatsby is? Is it the South, where Inherit the Wind is set? Or is it a Native American reservation where the absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian is set? These are all intentional choices by the author in order to use the rules, the stereotypes, the limits of physical settings to start putting eventually, as you'll see, pressures on these characters. We also need to consider time. When is the setting happening? Now, some text will give us an actual date and time from 1930 to 1934. Okay, it might be like as in Persepolis, the Iranian Revolution. We know exactly when that happened. It is very well defined in history. But there could also be settings that deal with this idea of like a relative time. Well, it happened in the past or it's supposed to be happening right now. Right now kind of depends on when you happen to be reading this. So a book that was written in 1948, but was supposed to be written about a future called 1984. We're making this podcast decades after 1984 was supposed to have happened. And that is decades after the actual book was written. So what does Orwell's vision of the future mean? How does it line up with what actually happened in 1984? How does it line up with what is actually happening now whenever you happen to be listening to this? So as we're considering the time of the setting, we have to ask ourselves, is this an absolute moment in time, something that's clearly defined, or is it some sort of amorphous past, current, or future? And if it's any one of these, we have to consider and analyze why would the author be either very, very specific about a certain time period or very intentionally vague about when their story is supposed to be set time-wise. And then the third part of setting is what is, again, what I think is the coolest part as we start to analyze this literary term. It's the idea of limits and pressures. And so this is the idea of limits that the setting places on characters and action. And so setting creates limits. Certain things can happen within a given setting, and certain things can't. For example, 
If you have a text where characters are trapped on a deserted island, the limits are if things get really bad on this island, they can't just leave. They can't just run away. They can't just instantly ask for help and be saved from this deserted island. The author chose to put the characters on a place that is very difficult to leave. Therefore, the pressure is that the characters have to figure things out for themselves without help from an outside group. And ultimately, how the characters react to these limits and pressures teach them something because they've either overcome the limits and pressures or they have failed. And then we as readers can learn from their successes or their failures. So let's look a little bit more at that third part where how setting creates limits and pressures. And these are the three subsets that we tend to group texts into as we are overlapping setting with the hero's journey. These three patterns seem to jump out the most when we're looking at how setting overlaps with the hero's journey. Set number one is the idea of a character who has to leave the home setting and go to a new setting to have that hero's journey. The typical hero's journey begins where we meet a character in their ordinary work. But in this first subcategory, that character has to leave that very comfortable setting where they understand everything and go to someplace new. We often call these fish out of water settings. So for a quick example, a movie like Elf, the main character understands the limits and pressures of the North Pole. But when that character is forced to go to New York City that has its own sets of rules, the character doesn't understand that. They seem vastly out of place. And so we watch the character and say, hey, is this guy going to figure out what he needs to do? Or is he going to be crushed by the city? If he learns, we learn. If he's crushed by the city, we also learn. But vastly different themes. The subset one, leaving the home setting and going to a new physical setting, the Hunger Games. You know, Katniss knows District 12. She knows all the rules, she knows the pressures, she knows the limits, she knows how to exist there. But then the author takes that character out of the comforting, ordinary world and puts her in the capital and the very dangerous Hunger Games. So as Katniss grows and learns about herself, she is a dynamic character. She learns things, we learn things, and that's called theme. Another example is the remake of Jumanji, the Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle movie. The home setting is the character's high school. They understand how high school works. All of a sudden, they're pulled into a video game, and now they have to figure out about how to work together, how, what their own strengths and weaknesses are. The setting pushes them to change. They all become dynamic characters because of the setting. They learn, we learn, that's theme. Subset number two is a setting that puts a physical movement limitation on a character. So they're still leaving the ordinary world for a hero's journey, but that journey might be much more internal and cerebral. So for example, in the last slide, we mentioned the book Lord of the Flies. The kids are placed on a deserted island. They can't leave. There's really no place for them to go when things get tough. They can't swim across a span of water and get to another island. They're stuck in this place. And so the characters have to figure out if they survive this challenging yet limited physical place, they learn something. And at the same time, if they fail because they can't escape the craziness, they learn something also. Again, anything the characters learn is stuff that we should learn as well. An example of settings that put physical movement limitations on characters, one might be the idea of The Breakfast Club, classic movies from the 80s. The physical setting is at the student's school, but they're in Saturday detention from 8 to 4. So it's not like they could say, man, detention's really boring. Let's go out to 7-Eleven. No, they are limited in where they can go. And it forces the characters to grow a certain way because they can't leave, because they are forced to deal with each other. The jock has to deal with the beauty queen, who has to deal with the geek, who has to deal with the burnout, that kind of stuff. The setting forces them to not be able to leave. And then very similarly, in an older Hitchcock film, the film is Lifeboat, where nine or ten characters survive a ship sinking by a German submarine. They escape to a lifeboat. And then, of course, problems, issues, concerns all arise while they're on that boat. And... The setting is they can't leave. If somebody becomes angry at somebody, if somebody feels like they've been double crossed, they can't just walk off of this lifeboat and say, well, I don't want to be with you. It puts limits and pressures on the characters to figure out who they are, how they're going to exist, how they can solve their problems, etc. 
And then the third subset are settings that cross sociological lines. So for example, class, race, and gender. And so again, the character is still leaving the comfort of their ordinary world for a hero's journey. And the journey setting might be familiar, but the class, race, and gender setting has changed. Moving on to that third subset, these are settings that cross those sociological lines. A great example is the movie Can't Buy Me Love, where you get high school students at Tucson High School just being high schoolers. And then all of a sudden, a geeky student tries to break into the cool students' clique. And so his physical setting hasn't really changed. He's still going to the same high school that he's gone to for four years. But now the pressure on him is different. He understood what it meant to be kind of geeky in that setting. But now he's trying to be cool. And so the cool kids have certain rules and pressures and limits that they put on each other in that high school setting. So again, the main character has to the main character doesn't really change his physical setting, but he does have to cross those sociological lines on the hero's journey. And then final example here, a movie like The Notebook. The physical setting is Seabrook, but again, we get this crossing of sociological lines where a working class guy falls in love with a wealthy woman. Like he understands how to be working class, but when he meets this woman and falls in love with her, all of a sudden, he's got to figure out how to exist in a world where money really matters. And so his setting hasn't fundamentally changed. It's still Seabrook, but his setting in terms of sociological lines has changed. And so that puts limits and pressures on that character to grow, to become better, to learn about himself, to learn about what he wants in the world. And again, anytime characters change, they are called dynamic characters and they learn and then we learn from those changes as well. So I think that's it. Again, remember those three big key points. Setting is physical. It is time. They are the limits and pressures that are placed on characters. And then go ahead and subdivide that limits and pressures part into the three big ones, which is a change in physical setting, a setting where characters can't really move and are forced to stay where they're at, or those settings that cross those sociological lines. When we get back to class, we'll practice looking at those and seeing how they apply to a whole bunch of things. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please bring those in. Otherwise, we will see you soon.